everyone, welcome back. It's a morning. All the painting and stuff is done. Well, most of it. I think I'm going to do the radiator cap, which I've just found! Thank you very much to the Modified Scimitar GT Forum on Facebook for telling me that I'd actually already just put this in the right place already because these holes are unique to each side and that is correct. Meaning the copper bits on the bottom here of the gasket boop, go contact with the actual engine block. So we had it the right way around just by happenstance. Good stuff. Now, with regards to sealing it, we're going to use some JB Weld proper stuff. Normally this is used for like bodge jobs and things like that and as soon as somebody mentions JB Weld it's like duct tape or something right? Uh, but this is its proper use or at least this stuff which is the Red High Temp RTV which is going to be going at the front of the block and the back of the block um, just to seal it but um, some people do go around the ports as well around each of the ports and smear it in um, but it's not required, so I'm not going to do that. I don't know, part of me thinks I should do that. It's like one of those, do I put, you know, stuff everywhere and make, bear in mind that actually there was an issue where somebody had already stuffed the RTV in the wrong place already, so the gasket should do its fucking job and seal it. I'm just going to do what, you know, the manufacturers do and put some either end. If it's broken beyond there, then it's a shit gasket, it's not my fault. So it's just basically gonna lead some down there and then the same this side I know I'm using a fucking pry bar again for stuff it's not designed for the other thing as well is that you don't want to put too much on because this is uh, gonna be crushed and it's then gonna go bleh, it ooze out so for instance here where I've got an absolute load of it because I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm doing I'm just gonna smear it that way away from this little inlet here or outlet whatever you are um, just to make sure. <laughs> Nothing, what a fucking mess! Okay, <laughs> good stuff. Right, I'm gonna <laughs> gonna shove it in the perforations. I know there's already there's already people watching this going, that car's oh. not gonna fucking last long. Yeah. Um, seriously, guys, in the comments, if I am doing anything ridiculous, please tell me. It might be worth mentioning, guys. Last night, whilst I did leave this off, um, it did rain. And in order to, uh, fuck now, um, in order to try and, <laughs> sorry, concentrating now, uh, to try and, um, you know, keep it dry because the whole engine's exposed, I did put a tarpaulin on top of the other bonnet as well. And it worked a treat because it did rain and there was no water in here at all. Proper job. Beauty. Right on. <laughs> uh, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Oh. Can you? Oh yes, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Wow, that could have gone a lot worse. Camera skills. Yes, I know. And your eyes. Yeah. That could have gone a lot worse, guys. This is literally a passage directly into the top of the engine. We're gonna get the old manifold, which, if you remember, I left the screws in or bolts in. So that should tell us what legs go where. Right. Right. I have figured it out. The four shorter ones go on the outside. Meanwhile, the ones that are slightly longer go on the inside here. The more you know, eh? Okay, so I am just gonna nip these up. These bolts have to be torqued to the correct setting. Um, so, very important that you don't just, one, just wang them in and hope that it's all right, but two, um, and as I said earlier, don't use an impact wrench, don't use one, because you need to feel. Oh, what else is there to do? Rocker covers, then carburetor, of course, um, which we have a new one. We've got the 38 DGMS to go on, meaning that it's got a manual choke instead of an automatic choke. Um, which bypasses all of that piping and everything like that and it looks nicer and it's brand new. This car had a problem with the way it ran before, um, like it would surge. If you were to hold it in a gear it would just go and that was supposedly 
most people would say down to a, probably a vacuum issue. Right everyone, look at them. All the bolts are in with their now split washers and everything. Top notch, ruddy gooden. Right, so uh, we can definitely start putting pipes back on now, which is a-okay. I want to put the rocker covers on very shortly after. I don't know why, I just don't like the engine being exposed like this. It feels weird, it feels funky, not in a good way. Not like Lazy Town. Lazy Town, funky town. Oh, yeah, you don't want to have a really lazy town, how old are you? Hmm, a million. <laughs> that is the kids program, right? Yes, it is. What do you mean, don't pretend you don't know what Lazy Town is. <laughs> you love Robbie Rotten. <laughs> what is that? Is that the one with the chin? Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to the roof of the scimitar. Today, I'm going to be showing you my rusty panel. Can you guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put some silicon in here. You don't need to, but I am. It's already got silicon on it from the previous guy, or whoever took these off last time. So I am gonna run my own bead of silicon along here. And just for lolsies. And then, once I've finished getting the cinder, I'm also going to use a cork gasket. Mm. <laughs> what, what, look, you see that? Yeah. What are you doing? Why is it too long? Fits fine here. And there. It's like it's. I might have to cut a little section of this out then. Bit overkill, whatever. Main thing here is to make sure that the screw hole still lines up. There you go, it was that much too long. That will go on there and seal lovely. Will it? Oh. So it goes like that and the notch is in the wrong place. It wasn't too fucking long. The little tabs on the end of it that are supposed to poke through on the gasket. Um, and they're in the wrong place on one of the sides. I wonder if that means they're different. I think they're different gaskets. Yeah. Yeah, because there's not a hole there for this. Why would you have different fucking gaskets for each side? What fucking idiot. Henry Ford, you absolute mongoose. Take your gasket off of the wrong rocket cover because they're different fucking pieces of shit for each side. And then furiously put it onto the other one. Still, actually, the tabs are off. It, there's no hole there. So, pretend what happened before didn't happen. It's fine. The gasket fits. All the tabs go in where they're supposed to. And it's okay. Look at that. Lovely, right? Amazing. Can't wait to fit this to the car and it worked absolutely. Now we've got to deal with that one. I'm guessing this just goes that way round. Right, yeah, lo and behold, fit it that way and it's, oh look, it's just a bit short. <laughs> Never mind, luckily. Still half that bit. Oh, yay. Right. Right. Lovely. Okay, so in hindsight, I have got RTV absolutely all over them. So normally at this point, I would say probably don't use RTV at all or get better at using it. But my advice is get black RTV if you're using black paint <laughs> so that it doesn't show up. Because mine's orange, yeah. Thermostat time. Let's get this thermostat in. There we go. And uh, I'm... <laughs> I'll be putting housing on. Look how good this looks. It's gonna look so good in there. It's gonna be amazing. Um, and I've got the gasket here. And you would have thought I've learnt my lesson by now, but I'm gonna RTV this as well. Yeah. This is exactly where you would want to use RTV, where there is actually a reason to. Uh, the reason being that your metal is pitted or you've got an uneven surface or whatever it may be. This is that scenario. I'm doing this on the car. Um, right. 
bang that on there. We'd rather just have this tube out of the fucking way for a moment. Okay, and it's come out everywhere. Good. Oh, fuck off, tube! Oh, you're very annoying, aren't you? So, um, these are the bolts I have. These are the ones that came off the car. You can see that uh, not really too much of a bolt thread going on there. Also, they've got a nice stack of washers, so I'm assuming it didn't come out of the factory with this. I know Reliant aren't known for their uh, quality control, but we're going to be looking for one. This is a kit. This is this kit here is the, of bolts is literally just for this top end of the engine. Um, the rocket cover bolts were separate, but they're all new. I can't believe how like it's such a shame. <laughs> like it was looking so good. And look at <laughs> the paint looks great. And then I've just got this orange RTV everywhere. I really fucked this up. But hey, the main thing is that the car's functional. This is not a show car by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Especially not yet. All the bolts on top of the engine here are in and in place, which is great. But they're not torqued to spec yet. And I want to do that before I start doing carburetor because of course they're going to be harder to access at that point. So yes, maybe I should have a look at that. I have heard back about the inlet manifold bolts and we're going between 16 and 20 foot pounds on the ones in the actual inlet manifold and then for all the other ones that are just like the rocker covers and the thermostat housing literally just hand tight with a spanner so that's great news. I will get the oldest torque wrench ever I think it would probably be a good idea. Here we go everyone look at this look at this beast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the loan of this. So, uh, unlike most torque wrenches, which will click, or, click, or even nice new, really nice modern, modern ones, will go beep, 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 when you get close. This one literally just has a readout on it, <laughs> and it will bend uh, as, as you actually do the bolt up. So that's great. There we go, torque wrenching done. Now, just going to make sure that all the rocker cover ones are done up hand tight, as mentioned. And then, oh, I've got that pipe to go back on. Where the hell is that pipe gone? The pipe that goes to the shed. Oh, it's actually in the shed. Never mind, I'll grab that in a moment. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that RTV everywhere. Doesn't it look horrible? It really does. But I have given this little polish. Look, you can see how clean the dirt is now. And I almost put it in there. I am going to pop this on. Ooh, look, this is coming together now, isn't it? Look at that. Can't wait. Can't wait to get that new carburetor on there. Next step, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. Actually, everyone, I lied. It's not going to be the next step. I want that to be the last thing that we do because that's going to look ruddy handsome. But we also have this pipe, which is the overflow from the thermostat housing. So we'll put that in there. It's been overheated so many times that that thread's pretty much gone. Um, and that pipe just goes on there. There we go. Distributor. Now, I took this off for the first time the other day. This is my first time putting one back in. No idea. There's a little cable in there. these clips are up so that they don't get uh, caught there we go that I felt that go onto the gear then as well look at this almost so close to being professional then guys so close so I don't think I showed you this yesterday this is the little doohickey that um, holds the uh, distributor down and I have taken the old bolt, lined it up against the set of new replacements I've got, and that is the one that goes in there. That's the right one. So, get it back in. Lock that distributor down. I think I got it. It's solid. That is not going anywhere. Okay, everyone. So, step one is this diffuser slash distribution plate slash you know, recycling gases from the top of the engine device, uh, which goes in. Um, primarily, it's a spacer, um, and the fuel shoots down into these Vs at the bottom here, if you like, and they then shoot the, or diffuse, 
the fuel into the inlet manifold, meaning that it gets a more even distribution across the engine. Great stuff. Gaskets, yeah! Let's get the carburetor, shall we? Pop it on. Oh, new, brand new carburetor. Look at E. Um, what's to note? It, as I said, it's the DGMS, meaning on this side where the choke normally is, it doesn't have it. It's got a manual choke assembly on there. That's pretty much it. Also, the other thing to mention, just gonna leave that on top of there for a moment, is we've got this. Believe it or not, those few bits there is a throttle linkage. I don't believe it, but let's have a go. So it's quite hard to actually picture it right now, but on the back, there's a wheel. There you go, can you see that? I'll try and zoom in on it. But yeah, um, this is also part of it as well. The cable then just literally goes into the other end of it and then when he's dead on the pedal, it pulls it like that. But, you know, don't know how well it's gonna work. It'll probably need adjustments of some description. I'm now at the stage where the cable here is going into the car, absolutely fine. Oh, if I can get that. I don't know, it's quite hard because I've still got the tripod legs down. Um, but yeah, it's going into the car, uh, so I need to now connect that back up to the pedal so I know how much slack I've got to work with here and if it needs trimming at all. Um, also, if you guys remember, the footwell is filled, not filled, but it's got a lot of oil in it from when I started the car up without the oil pressure gauge hooked up. So I'm going to clean that up as well. Fun things ahead. Oh my gosh, guys, it's been a while since I've looked at this. <laughs> It is so bad. Like, because it's wet as well now, because the car obviously leaks, right? Oh, oh my God, it's gone like, let's see if I can capture it for you. Look at that in the footwell there. Uh, have I got something to disturb it with? Uh, look, and you can see all the oil is actually just sat on top and you can clear a hole. Fucking disgusting. My plan of action is going to be Blue roll, don't worry, I've got a lot more of this. Um, I'm sure we'll go through this. I'm literally just gonna lob it in there, let it absorb what it can, put it into this, and lob it in the bin. TPing my own car. It's good, it's good. <gasps> oh, miss. I hope there's nothing living in this. Imagine if I just found a frog in there or something. Right, that pretty much did nothing. So, um, look at this like milkshakey, oily water on me. What I'm gonna do is deploy a little military tactic. I know, right? On retro sesh, um, just drill a hole in it and then let it drain out through the bottom. And then once all the scum is sat there on top, I can then scoop that up. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Right, let's see if that's working. Hey! He's up for the wee wee! This must be the longest episode, of, at least to film, ever. I took this, I got the new manifold, sorry, the inlet manifold, maybe three months ago, and then scraped that down, painted it up, which you would have seen at the beginning of this episode, put the engine back together, and here we are. Father is on the camera today. Father is here because of the throttle linkage, mainly at least, if you want to come around the back of the carburetor. Um, so you can see that this is not a standard setup. We have had to use the original plate here for the throttle cable to go in. Thank you for pointing that one out, Father. Um, and then as it pulls back on that, the actuates the throttle. Lovely stuff, which works, ish. Um, it does stick open at wide open throttle, but don't worry, we're not going to be going wide open throttle. Worst case scenario is it doesn't start. It's going to take a lot of cranking because it's a brand new carburetor. It's got no tune on it at all. All right, so it could take some cranking, especially to get some fuel in the bowl. Um, it's not in gear. Ha 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 
We are assuming that. Bearing in mind, of course, I have done the entire inlet manifold, which means distributor out, everything like that. It could be that this just needs a bit of adjustment. I did it, all six cylinders now, oh yeah. I'm sure you guys want to know what it actually sounds like from the back. To be honest, I do as well. This is a good excuse, I reckon. go everyone now I don't know if that's the uh, well I mean that is exactly the ending that I wanted there of course is there are other things as well now to make sure that the coolant and oil are keeping separate that the gaskets put in properly uh, there's nothing externally leaking here that I can see no fluid fuel uh, or oil coolant of any kind on top of the engine so that's always a bonus um, you know there's a couple of bits of smoke coming off but when you're working on a car like this and you get oil and you get uh, WD-40 and stuff on the headers and things like that it's bound to happen Train. so yeah thank you very much for sticking with me this one guys it's been so long to get all this stuff done to get the throttle linkage on it does stick wide open when you put your foot down so <laughs> I need to work out a return spring system on the carburetor as well as get a new cable because this one just the measurements aren't quite there it's a bit out of it's a bit out of uh, geometry with it but hey this is a good start and hey I could technically drive it uh, and make sure that the gearbox works um, when I say drive it I do mean literally just roll it back and forward because brakes as you guys know if you've been following the brakes well you can pump them but they don't really they don't really work so um, yeah it will just be making sure the gearbox is uh, working correctly as it should be but that will be in the next episode guys I'll see you there